In this video, I'm actually going to explain everything you need to know about NPC presets, why are they so powerful and useful, and what every single one of those settings or value do. So first of all, as a quick recap, in RPG Builder, you can have NPCs, of course, as many as you want, and all those NPCs can have phases, and you can have as many phases as you want. Now, each phase has a phase template, but as we saw in the AI introduction video, each phase also has its own NPC preset, as you can see here. Now, a quick rundown on what an NPC preset is. As you can see here, a preset is holding data or information about the appearance of your NPC. For example, it's going to look like a bear, it's going to have like a bear model of this size, it's going to have a collider of this type and this size, it's going to be playing this kind of animations and so on. And NPCs, like I said, can have as many phases as you want, and each phase can have its own preset. So you could have a bear with maybe two phases, so the bear starts as a normal bear, and phase two, it becomes even bigger, maybe it becomes red or something, and you don't need to do anything special, you can just create a new preset, you can have it have a different collider, something much bigger, right? Because it is also now much bigger. Playing a different kind of animation. Maybe now his animations are going to be more angry, you know, more aggressive. And you can just easily swap, um, seamlessly swap those uh, preset out based on the current phase. So let's go through the details and the options that we have here. So first we have everything that's related to the visual, right? So the first field, as you can see, is simply a bare prefab. That's our model. You can see that it has no other component on it. We have no animator, nothing. RPG Builder is taking care of all that. But here we have our bare model. That's it. So if we wanted this to look like a bear, well, that's what we will do. Here we have a bar, and here we can even have, you know, anything you want, skeletons and things like that. So you basically create your prefabs, and you make sure to um, assign them in there. And that's how this NPC preset is going to look in-game. Next to this, we have the position. So this is going to be um, the local position of this bear prefab when it is spawned inside your NPC. Because this bear prefab is not going to be used as a parent, it's actually going to be spawned as a child. So usually what I use this for is when I want to slightly tweak um, the fit position, or rather, you know, the height of the bear. So may because maybe sometimes with Unity's nav mesh system, the feet aren't exactly on the ground, and you can use this to very easily uh, make it exactly how it should look. Now, very easily, you can also affect the size or rather the scale of your things, right? So, for example, here you see that the bar, I thought the base prefab was a bit too big, so I set it to 0.8, but here we could have maybe 2, 2, 2, and then we would have, you know, a bear twice as big as the prefab. So, this allows to never tweak the prefab directly, you just tweak the values here in the preset. Next, we have how the UI, or rather, you know, the, the nameplate in this case, of this NPC are going to be uh, in game. So first we have the NPC offset or like the nameplate Y offset. This means how high from the you know NPC origin should the nameplate be. So when you look at your NPC, um, it's going to be 2.5 meters above. So you can of course tweak this to your liking, but this is very important because if an NPC is very big, you might want this to be a lot higher, right? Here it's also for the nameplate. Um, how far away from the player can you see those nameplates? So in this case, 50 meters. And here we have a renderer name. So what this means is that the nameplate system is basically um, having a reference of one of the renderer from the NPC. Uh, and it's using this renderer to basically calculate if it can be seen by the camera currently. If it can't be seen, we disable the nameplate, right? Because we don't need it. But uh, it also means that we need the renderer, right? So if you leave this empty, because you can leave it empty, then it's going to try to find the first renderer it can find inside your NPC. But if you wanted it to use a specific renderer, you can type the name of the game object. So if I go ahead here and look at my bear, and here you can see that under meshes we have um, a body, which is the name I have here. Let me see here, up. And here it's going to look at this uh, game object and find its renderer. So when this mesh is going to be visible, then the nameplate should be visible. Next, we have uh, animator controller. So in this case, you can drag and drop two things in here. You can either drag and drop an actual animator, as you can see here. Let me open that. So this is one of the NPC animator, right? So I could go ahead now and drag and drop this here. Or we can drag and drop an animator override. 
both are accepted in this field. And as you can see here, um, this is an override of this animator. So we basically don't have to redo all of that. We just use this as is, but instead of playing the animations that are in that, all of those, we play or on here. We just override them. So that's really useful, but I'm going to cover this um, more and better in another video. Next, we have the NPC avatar. You can also leave this empty in the case that your NPC is not using an avatar, but in the case of the bear, it does. So this is found in the in the, the FBX, not the prefab, right? But you can find avatars in the FBX. So this could be a human, whatever, right? But in this case, it's a bear. And you can just simply drag and drop this. Below, these are just animator um, components. So um, here we have root motion, all those things. I usually leave them as default like that. But if you wanted root motion enabled on your NPC, you could do it that way. Next, we have the nav mesh settings. Again, these are Unity settings and nothing to do with RPG Builder. But RPG Builder just gives you access to those and how to easily modify them. And next, again, Unity settings, not RPG Builder. But this basically lets you define what kind of collider should this NPC use. So you have a few options. And then for each of those, you know, you have their uh, respective options. So nothing really uh, fancy here. And last, we have the distance max to interact with it. So let's say that you had an ally uh, human. For example, like the merchant here, a few meters is fine. But if this human, or rather, if this allied merchant was now, I don't know, a giant creature, you might want to put something like 10 or 15, right? So because you can't really get inside it, so you, you have to make it possible to interact with it um, further. And that's where the power of those presets are, because you can very easily swap those and you can create it now. For example, we could create the bear just like we did here and we can now create all kind of different npcs and they can all use the same preset but have completely different values right they could even be allied some could be um, an enemy to you and so on so that's pretty much how the preset system works and um yeah that's all i wanted to cover in this video so let me know as always on discord if you have any questions and see you in the next video for more information about ai